So uh, good morning, everybody. Um, glad you could join us, or actually good afternoon. Sorry, I keep thinking it's morning. But um, with the, uh, I got a couple of pieces of news. One is on the, um, actually I only got one piece of news, but it's, I think it's good news. So uh, I said that I wasn't sure about the uh, EOC and whether you guys would have to take that again at a later time for your graduation requirement. So uh, I asked Ms. Mason to send me whatever she had gotten so far from um, the county or state in regards to it. Um, and as I read through what they had sent to her, um, it gave me some information here. So um, one is that um, obviously you're not taking the EOC this year and you're not going to um, necessarily be required to take it at a later time either. So here's what's gonna happen for your graduation requirement on that EOC. So you're not gonna have to go back and take the EOC for Algebra One later. So they're gonna replace that graduation requirement with one of two, actually three things technically. The easiest one for you will be um, taking the geometry EOC, whether you're taking it next year or whenever you take geometry, if you wind up going to some school like an IB school or, or um, something like that, where maybe you're taking algebra two next year and then take geometry the year after, the geometry EOC will actually replace your algebra one EOC as the graduation requirement. So something you're gonna have to take anyway um, will replace that. And honestly, um, I've heard the Geometry EOC is easier than the um, Algebra One EOC. I've never actually seen it, so I can't necessarily vouch for that. But um, generally speaking, I don't think people have as much difficulty passing the Geometry EOC as people do passing the Algebra One EOC. So um, good news there. All right. Um, so any questions on that before, oh, sorry, let me tell you about the second thing that can replace it. If that, for some reason, you don't wind up taking geometry, I don't know that any of you will not take geometry, that seems unlikely. But the other thing that can replace the Algebra One um, EOC as a graduation requirement is a, a, what they call a concordant score on the SAT or the ACT. So you'll probably start taking those things uh, either sophomore, uh, junior, possibly even senior year uh, as you're trying to get into colleges and take those scores. And I don't think any of you are, they haven't told us what those scores are gonna be, like what the equivalent scores for the math section on the SAT, for example, would need to be to count. But I don't think any of you are gonna have an issue getting those scores. Uh, all right, so it uh, looks like I got a question from, Jaden here. So Jaden, what's your question? Okay, so are you saying we'll take the geometry ESC when we take geometry in high school or early like this year? No, when you take it next year. Okay. Most of you will take it next year. Um, some of you, like I said, if like if you're going to IB or um, I think Patel does uh, Algebra two as a freshman um, instead of geometry. Uh, so um, if you're taking it then, um, you would uh, just take it whenever you're taking the geometry. So yeah, uh, the geometry EOC will uh, replace that for you. Okay, thank you. Yep. All right, uh, any other questions on that at all? All right, it looks like uh, we've got a good number of people in. So 33 of you in here uh, today, that's a good number. Uh, so we're gonna go ahead and get started on these notes, make sure that uh, everybody's uh, clear on that and got those filled in. Uh, all right, so let me share this screen here. All right, that's very crooked, sorry about that. We'll zoom out a little bit. We can see these. All right. So um, 
these are the notes uh, we should have uh, in front of us. If you don't have those in front of you, please go ahead and get those uh, in front of you so we can uh, make sure they're all filled in and uh, we got everything correct on them. All right, so um, we looked at vertex form on Wednesday and um, oh, one more thing, sorry about that. Uh, some of you for, I don't know what it is and I've sent some emails to you guys or messages to most of you who I've been able to identify. For some reason, there are a few of you in each class that IXL is not showing me that you've done the sections. So if at any point you've done a section and um, it seems to be a consistent thing, it's like it's, if I just can't see any of your work on IXL for some reason, it just keeps telling me that you haven't done it. All right, so um, I think uh, Evan, I've identified uh, Kirsten, um, Elish, I think, is also in that situation. Um, a couple of others. Um, I think Zeke uh, was having an issue with it as well. So please just make sure that uh, if you've got that done, and I'm trying to get IXL to fix that for us, uh, but they're really backed up. They obviously they've probably closed all of their call centers and and things like that. People probably their tech people working from home too. Um, so. Uh, they're going to take a while to get back up, back to us on some problems. Plus, they've got just a lot of people on their um, their platform as well. Just like Zoom has got more people on it than than ever before as well. So, um, it's going to take a while probably to get that fixed. So, in the meantime, um, if you can just if you see that I'm putting in as as overdue, but you did it, just send me a screenshot. Please make sure the screenshot includes the actual section itself and I can see your name and your score, the number of problems you did and, and all of that, okay? So um, I wanna make sure that you're giving me a full screenshot um, of everything, okay? So if that's an issue for you, if you see something overdue and you're like, I did that, just send me the screenshot and I'll get it put in for you, okay? All right, so back to our um, notes here. So for this, um, the axis of symmetry, right, for any parabola is equal to the x value of the vertex point, okay? So if we think about what a parabola looks like, right, if we've got a parabola here, right, this axis of symmetry is gonna be our x value along uh, there. So, um, Continuing on to find our axis of symmetry, right, for any standard form function rule, what we're gonna do is we're gonna take the uh, B value and use its opposite. So we're gonna take the opposite of B, it's shown as negative B, but it really just means the opposite of B. So if B is negative, we would use a positive version of it. If it's positive, we would use the negative version of it. So whatever the opposite of B is over 2a. All right, so whatever our a value is uh, there. Uh, let's see real quick. Let me pull up this chat. Somebody's sending me a message. All right, so Nova, um, the notes check. Uh, check the notes from that I posted under the Wednesday part. Uh, and you should find those there, all right? If not, just copy and follow along, okay? All right, um, one other thing I wanna mention, uh, cause Sky just came in and I don't doubt that this is actually Sky. Um, however, Sky did not have her full name on here. So I'm gonna fix that real quick, all right? Um, and a couple of you fall into this category. So Sky, I'm just coming to you real quick. So I'm gonna rename you and put how, your last name on there. How do you rename me? Like, how do I rename myself? Um, I think once I rename you, it should stay. Let's see. You oh yeah, that's on. You've done, right? Yeah. Okay. So, um, and I'll, I will, uh, once I get, 
because there's a couple of you who have some profile pictures um, on there and you're not sure how to get them off. Uh, Alejandro is one, I think um, Nova said that she was having some trouble getting that as well. So they've told us, and this information has been sent uh, home, um, and a lot of this is just, I'm gonna go ahead and mute you back there, Sky. Um, a lot of this is just the um, ability for people to um, make sure that we are actually teaching the people who are supposed to be in our class, right? Um, so not that I, think that you're someone else because if you're putting sky right I'm, i mean there's very few people who are going to like just randomly type in sky as their name for uh if they're just trying to sneak in and cause some disruption in a in a class all right but that's what the county and our administration is worried about so administration has sent this out to parents and they've stressed it to us that if you're trying to come into our class and you don't have both first and last name okay um, and that's full name, not just an initial, all right? Please make sure that your name is, is correct and that you don't have uh, any of the um, profile pictures or backgrounds or things like that, okay? Um, because we are going to, if we see it, even if I think it's you, I'm not gonna be allowed to admit you because if Mr. Wolford jumps in, um, and sees that I've allowed somebody in who just has a uh, first name or um, some, or just says iPhone. For example, I uh, didn't allow someone in that said iPhone. Uh, that was me. Uh, I was on my phone, and then it like automatically sets to iPhone. And okay. I didn't know how to change my name. So. All right. So, Zeke, I'm going to go ahead and add your last name on here as well. Just help me with the spelling in case I screw this up. U D O Z O R H, right? Yeah. All right. All right. There we go. Okay. So um, now that we've got all of that out of the way, uh, also next week they're going to ask us to, and I might have mentioned this before, but they're going to ask us to. Um, include a password. So next week, um, when I post all of my stuff, you'll see the passwords for uh, these classes. This week, I didn't put any on, um, but they keep kind of adding little bits and pieces to kind of help us with security and making sure people are, uh, you know, safe in this environment. All right. So, all right. So let's. Um, Get back to our notes here. All right. Oops. Switch to the wrong screen on myself here. All right. So back to our notes. We've got uh, for this practice, if I want to find this axis of symmetry, right, I'm going to use this negative B over 2A. All right, and we'll see this a bit more later on, and I'll point it out to you again when we get to it later in this unit, where this is coming from and why it exists uh, as it does. Uh, it's just easier right now to just say, use this versus trying to explain where it's coming from. But when we get to a section um, on solving quadratic equations, you'll see it again, and I'll point it out to you then, okay? So this axis of symmetry for the function, is gonna be opposite of B, so B is eight, so I'm gonna use the opposite of B, so negative eight, over two A. So two times A, A is four, so my axis of symmetry or X value here is gonna be negative eight over eight, which is negative one. So my axis of symmetry is going to be negative one. So my vertex point, the only point on the parabola will be on negative one will be somewhere along there, okay? Uh, let's see. Um, so Nova asked the question, uh, if I have a profile picture, are they still going to let me in because I can't take it off? Um, I'm gonna post um, some information on Edsby about how to make sure that your name is correct um, and how to make sure that you don't have a profile picture. So I, I'm gonna 
uh, find that information and post all of that to Edsby before our class on Tuesday. I'll try and do it before uh, you come to class on Monday for um, any any classes that you have Monday for language arts or uh, science then as well. All right, so uh, good question. Nova, thank you, and I'll get that information posted for everybody so that uh, we can make sure that our names are correct and that our uh, profile pictures are removed if we add one in some way. All right, so graphing from uh, a function with that BX term, right, we've already talked about how to do this without it, right, that if without it, it's uh, the C value would be our vertex point um, on the Y axis, but with it, it's a different situation. So we have to find um, our negative B over 2A first to figure out where our vertex is going to be located, at least generally. Um, and so we will use this. So we'll say negative 6, because 6 is positive, so we're going to use the opposite of it. If it was negative 6, it would become positive 6. And then 2 times a, a is negative three here. So we have negative six over negative six. So we have an x value of one for this. So our vertex point is gonna be somewhere along here, all right? So our axis of symmetry is gonna be along, let me just put that in red so you can see it a little bit better. So our axis of symmetry is gonna be along this line somewhere, all right? So our vertex is in on that, uh, line of x equals one. So how do we find where the y value is along there is we go back into our function and replace x with one wherever x appears. So we're going to um, come over here and say y equals negative three times x squared. Well x is one so we're going to replace x with one there and then six times one plus five. All right, so we just simplify this. One squared is one, and then times negative three, so that term becomes negative three, and then six times one is six, and then plus five is still there. All right, I wanna point out something here because this happens very often in quadratic functions. Notice how those are related, all right? Usually that middle term is uh, either half or double what that first term is, depending on the number that's being plugged in, okay? So there's always this relationship of that first term to that middle term where there's always this sort of kind of half or double relationship. And it's sometimes it's positive, sometimes it's negative, um, but there's usually value-wise a sort of double relationship depending on the number, okay? So uh, adding those together first, we get three plus five, so y is eight. So that's our vertex point then of one, eight. Okay, so when x is one, y is eight. So our vertex point is up here at eight. And then we're just going to use our patterns from here, right? The same patterns we were using to graph um, when we didn't have a b, same patterns we were using when we were graphing in vertex form. So the negative three is telling us our pattern here, okay? So the first one is instead of going to be out one, up one, we're gonna multiply that up by the negative three. So it's gonna be out one, down three. Okay, so we would go out one, down three on this side as well. And I wanna point out something here. Notice the y-axis, where it crosses the y-axis here is at five. So our C value, is still our y-intercept, okay? So we could have had that point, and if we just wanna make sure that we've gotten the right vertex, that should be our y-intercept, uh, should be equal to the c-value each time, all right? So we've done this properly, and if we wanted to add some more points, we would go, instead of out one, uh, up three, we're gonna do that up three times the negative three as well. So out one, instead of up three, we would be times negative three, so down nine is technically what we would have. So we would go down nine here, and then same thing on the other side, we would be down nine there. So we have this um, parabola that looks like this, okay? So any questions on that uh, example before we move on to the practice?
right, doesn't look like we got any questions going on here. So um, moving on to the practice problem then. All right, we're gonna do the same thing here. Let's just scoot this down so we can see the practice problem. And let me just straighten this out. So, all right. So we've got, um, once again, we're gonna start with X equals negative B over 2A or the opposite of B over 2A, right? Don't think of it necessarily as negative because we wanna make sure that if we got a negative, that it becomes its opposite. So the opposite of B, well, B is negative eight. So the opposite of that is positive eight, all right? Over two times A. Well, A is not showing up here, so that means A is one. So we're gonna find that uh, this is eight divided by two. So X is equal to four, all right? So that's our um, X value in the vertex. So we wanna find the Y value by simply coming back and plugging it in to our function rule. So Y equals X squared, well, X is four. So I'm gonna square that, minus eight times four again for X, plus 10, okay? So four squared is going to become 16, minus eight times four is 32. Notice again, this double difference, okay? So this is double the amount of this, all right? Again, just value-wise, plus 10, all right? So we're gonna do this first, right? When we do this, right, if we understand that this is a double situation, we're usually just gonna get this value. So 16 minus 32 is negative 16 plus 10, and then we get negative six from that. So y is equal to negative six. So our vertex point is four, negative six. All right, so we're gonna come over here to four and then down to negative six for our vertex. All right, so this is our axis of symmetry here again. And with this, all right, so Maya, one sec. Um, so Maya says, on the practice, you have a minus 10 for C, but I have a plus 10. Uh, mine says plus 10 also. So maybe just blurry on the camera, I'm not sure. Um, and Nick says it's negative eight. Um, I don't think I made any error here. Or did I? I don't think I did. So that's negative eight, but opposite of B. So let me just come to Nick real quick, see what he's asking there. Uh, let me locate Nick real quick. All right, so sorry about this guy. Sometimes with this many people in, it uh, takes me a while to locate people. All right, um, expand this so I can see a few more names. All right, Nick G, there we go. All right, Nick. Um, if it's a negative eight in the question, does, does that mean it becomes a positive eight? Like, when... Yeah, so if, if B is negative, it becomes a positive because All right, got it. Of B, so if B is positive, it becomes negative. If it's negative, it becomes positive. Okay. Yeah, All, right. I get it. All right. Thank you. All right. So Sky looks like she's got her hand up real quick. Sky, did you have a question? Yeah. For when you were finding out X, how did you get for you got negative B over 2A? How did you get the 2A or the 2 in that problem? How did I get the 2? Yeah. Like, why did you put the 2 there? Why is it a 2? Um, it's just, again, it's kind of hard to explain right now where that negative B over 2A is coming from. Um, when we get a little bit later into this unit, you'll see where that, like, is derived from, where that sort of equation comes from and why we use that. Um, but for right now, just understand, I guess, that that is what we use to find it. Um, 
And when we get to that section in this unit, I'll stress again kind of why that is there. Okay. Right? Thank you. It's a little bit backwards in how we how this gets taught um, because we have to show you how to graph before we show you how to solve quadratic equations. Um, the quadratic equation situation is where that actually comes from. Okay, so we'll we'll get to it a little bit later in this unit. All right. Okay. Thank you. Uh, all right, Jules. What's your question, Jules? Can you hear me? Yeah. Okay, so I'm just confused on where you get the factor of A from. Like, on the bottom it's 2A, but I don't understand where the factor of A comes in. Like, where do you get that factor from? So the A is the coefficient on the first term, all right? So the A would be whatever value is here. So in our practice problem, it was negative 3. Oh. So in this problem, it's technically 1x squared, right? So oh, okay. that's where that 1 is coming from. Okay, thank you. Yep. All right. Um, so any other questions? Let me just check and make sure real quick before we continue on here. All right, looks good. Okay. Um, so now graphing this, continuing our graphing process. So uh, we're gonna use our patterns from here. Once we have our vertex, right, it's our kind of starting point. We're gonna use our patterns from here, right? So our pattern, a regular pattern is out one, up one, out one, up three, out one, up four, or sorry, five. Okay, so that's our regular pattern. Um, is our pattern going to change at all for this one? So let me just uh, come to um, someone I haven't heard from in some of these. All right, Maddie Herbert, I'm gonna come to you here. Is our pattern gonna change for this one? Um, yes. Okay, what causes the pattern to change? What value? A, B, C, which one? Not sure. All right, so Maddie, I'm gonna come back to you in a second, but I'm gonna come to someone else real quick, okay? All right, uh, let's see. So, uh, Nova's got her hand up real quick. So Nova, are you answering this question or you got a question of your own? Oh, um, I have a question. Okay. Um, so like if they're not, diff like if it doesn't use this pattern of like out one, up one, out one, up three, um, how do you decide like if it needs a different one? That's what I'm confused about. Is that what we're doing right now? Well, hopefully here our Quest, that question will be answered by whoever's answering the question I'm asking, all right? So just okay. hang on and we'll, we'll hopefully get that answer for in, in a second. All right, uh, Libby had her hand up. Libby, are you wanting to answer this question of whether this is going yes. to change or not? Yes, I am. Okay. So if I'm looking at the correct problem, the pattern wouldn't change because there's it's just one if there was if the a value was different then the pattern would change so it's just going to be up out one uh up one out one up three and so on and so on all right good so um with the pattern okay um so going back to nova's question the pattern is determined by as libby just said the a value Right, so the A value being one, that doesn't change the pattern. All right, good job, Libby, thank you. So uh, Nova, so in the, the previous example, right, let me go back to the previous example. Uh, let me find it over here. In this previous example, right, notice we didn't go out one, up one, right? We went out one, down three, okay? And that's because this value of A is negative three. So this regular pattern 
of out one, up one gets multiplied by the A. Okay, the out one doesn't, the out one's always out one. It's the up pattern that's getting multiplied. So this would instead become out one down three because it's negative. Okay. Okay. Follow that. Mm -hmm. Okay. So for this one, when we go back to that worksheet, that problem, the A value is one. So this pattern is technically getting multiplied by one, which doesn't change it. Right. Okay. All right. Thank you. All right, so um, we're gonna go out one, up one, out one, up three. And then if we wanted to continue, we could keep going and go out one, up one, two, three, four, five there. All right, we could continue that pattern, okay? And then we've got the axis of symmetry. So all of these points will have a reflected point over here. All right. And I should know that my y intercept is what value. So from our equation, I should be able to recognize my y intercept. Okay. Um, so which value tells me my y intercept? So let's see, who have I not heard from and talked to a little bit at least? Um, all right, looks like Anna Mitchell's got her hand up. Anna? Um, I just had a question. Yeah. So the A is the first x and the B is the next x? Yeah, so A is the coefficient for the x squared term, and the B is the coefficient for the x term, and C is your constant. What do you mean C is your constant? So this is, a, is the C, right? So this is BX, and this is AX squared. Okay, thank you. Yep. All right, so um, I should be able to see my... Um, all right, Donovan, you had your hand up. Did you have a question yeah. or you wanted to um, answer something? I think I wanted to answer. Is it C? Right, so our C term is going to be our intercept. So if I, if I wanted to graph a point, right, I could go right here and put that Y intercept up there. All right, and if we continued our pattern, we would go out one up seven, which would put it at 10 for us, okay? Good job, Donovan. Thank you. Thank you. All right, um, so let me go ahead and mute that back. All right, so that will um, wrap up our review of these questions. Um, there is a worksheet for you guys to work on, um, and uh, it will look like, let me show you the worksheet here real quick. Let me get out of this and stop sharing that screen. Actually, before I stop sharing this screen, does anybody have any questions about this practice problem at all before we continue on? All right, Shelby's got her hand up. Shelby, did you still have a question? Yeah. Yeah, I do. Okay, what is it? Sorry, I was wondering for the, in the front on the uh, example, um, uh -huh. To find the axis of symmetry, you can use yeah. the ratio relationship of what? All right, so the um, axis of symmetry, the relationship of negative b over 2a is what we're using, and that's always equal to your x value for your um, axis of symmetry and also the x value for where the vertex is. Okay, thank you. Yep. So thank you, Shelby. All right. So um, real quick, I just want to um, point out probably why Shelby had that question because she came in a little bit late and that's okay. I'll admit people at any point they come in during this lesson, but if you miss anything um, and you're welcome to ask the question just like Shelby did uh, to get that information uh, if you need. 
But if you miss something and somebody doesn't ask that question or you don't ask that question, you can always go to the YouTube channel and watch, you know, just the first five minutes or 10 minutes of whatever you missed. Okay. So, um, and you may want to do that if you come in late just to see if there was something you missed. Like today, I made an announcement about the EOC. Okay. So uh, if you missed that, you may want to go watch that once I get those uh, uh, posted. So um, I'm usually getting those posted pretty quickly uh, afterwards. Um, and Anna's got her hand up. She probably wants to know what I announced. Anna, what's up? Oh, um, yeah, I asked too many questions. No, that's fine. Um, so for the last practice problem, you put like like one hi one line higher than the other. I don't understand that. Oh, I could have continued. I was just pointing out that this um, 10, right? This is 9, 10 up here. That 10 is your y-intercept, and it's shown to you by that c value, right? So could I have continued over here? Sure. I could have gone out one up seven and had a point over here as well at, uh, what is that, 6, 10 also, right? I could have continued uh, and made it more even, but it um, doesn't matter necessarily as long as you've got enough points to create the parabola. Okay, thank you. All right, uh, any other questions? And please don't hesitate to ask questions during these, right? Because as, as I was saying, when people uh, watch this back, if they're not here, right? Maybe they're having the same question as you and it's gonna help somebody else out, okay? So going to Jules here. What's your okay, question, Jules? Sorry, I have, okay, so, so the variable C, that determines the fourth pattern and the, Oh, is it, does the fourth, the, this 10, or sorry, the C determine the fourth pattern for the out one up? Like, does it always determine the fourth pattern? No, C doesn't determine pattern at all. What C is, is our Y intercept. So just like in slope intercept form, right? Um, when we were talking about linear functions, the Y equals MX plus B, I told you at that point when we were talking about that, that sometimes people call it Y equals MX plus C. <clears throat> Excuse me, like in England and places like that, they call it Y equals MX plus C instead of plus B. And the reason mm -hmm. for that is because of this situation where you've got this C term, the constant term, it makes more sense to call it that than B, right? Because then when we get into this, it gets a little confusing, right? Mm -hmm. e here versus b in the linear function is two different things so um normally uh c i shouldn't say normally always c is our y intercept okay just like it is in the linear function that constant is the intercept in the linear function format it's the same thing for this quadratic function format so the constant is our y intercept oh, okay thank you yep Oops, sorry, I think I just clicked unmute on you, so you, all right, um, any other questions? Uh, Bryson actually looks like he has some information he just sent to me through chat. It says you can edit now on your screen in the name box where there's uh, three dots, all right? So if you um, hover over your name, right, those three dots, let me just, uh, just make sure. That because uh, that's where I can change your name, so I think you can change your name from there as well. Um, maybe not positive. So um, anyway, that would be uh, where you can change your name, I believe. But as I said, I'll post all that information onto uh, the Edsby page um, so that people can see how to to make those changes if they need to. All right. All right, and uh, Bryson, I think, says also profile picture there. Okay, thank you, Bryson, for all that info. Actually, let me just go to you and see if you need to add anything for us to that uh, verbally. So, all right, so Bryson, did you uh, want to add anything else to what you were sending me through the text?
<laughs> he sent me through text. No. All right. Sounds good. All right. Um, so uh, at this point, I think we're done with our lesson unless anybody's got any questions. Um, let me just get out of here. And um, does anybody have anything, uh, anything good they want to want to tell us what's going on good? Has anybody had any difficulty with anything this week? Any questions about upcoming weeks? All right, well, um, it looks like uh, we are good at this point then. So uh, I'm gonna go ahead and wrap this class up at this point. Uh, if you have any questions on that worksheet as you work through it, um, if you're having trouble with it, please come see me at, uh, and let me just show you the worksheet, make sure everybody's got the right one here. Um, so I'm gonna go to a, my uh, Google Drive where that's located. Uh, and then I'll share that screen with you here in a second. So you make sure you're using the right one. Uh, Alex Sabella earlier told me I had the wrong link. So thanks to him. I know he's not here right now, I don't think, but um, told me I had the wrong link. So hopefully uh, that is corrected. So this is, uh, let me actually share this with you real quick. So let's see here. All right, there we go. All right, so this is uh, the worksheet that we are going to be, um, or you guys are going to be working on today. So notice some of these have only partial quadrants. So this, um, you may only see a part of the graph, okay? Um, and that's okay, right? Like as I was saying to Anna when she asked me the question about that one being sort of uneven, it's okay if it's uneven. It doesn't have to be exact or perfect. Uh, as long as you got enough points to show me where the vertex is and some points on either side, all right? So uh, notice these six right here are in standard form, seven and eight are in your vertex form, okay? So a little bit of practice going back to the vertex form for those last two, all right? So don't be confused there. Just remember what we talked about with the vertex form and that this three and one are um, your vertex point. Uh, as well. Okay, so um, Jules says, where's the worksheet located? Can't find it on Edsby. So let me just go over here to Edsby real quick and show you and I'll just use Oops. Okay. Um, got things from Nate coming in. All right, so um, if we scroll down to the Friday, all right, it says here, uh, graph, graphing, graphing <laughs> quadratic functions from standard form worksheet, All right? So if I click on it, should just open up that, uh, that worksheet that I was just showing you, okay? So should be there. All right, any other questions before we get out of here? Let me get to this screen. All right, well, if uh, nobody else has any other questions, we're gonna shut this down. Have a great weekend, guys. If you need any help, again, come see me at my office hours from two to three, and you can find those that information on how to get onto that at the top of your weekly uh, on your Edsby page, okay? Uh, some of you have been coming in uh, quite a bit uh, the last couple of days, and I appreciate it. Uh, it's much better to have some uh, some work to do during that time than just sitting and staring at a screen, all right? So um, have a great weekend, enjoy uh, your free time, I suppose, and uh, I'll see you on Tuesday for our next class, all right? Fist bump, I'm out.